Oh yeah, I can do that. Watch Come this. On. Oh yeah, I can do that. I know. Oh yeah, I can do that. Oh yeah, I can do that. Watch Come this. <laughs> can everybody float around for us? That was really cool, Chris. Swallow our toothpaste. If you swallow our toothpaste. We just get rid of the toothpaste in a small cup like this. In this scene, Chris Hadfield bends down in order to adjust something, and you can see on the back of his shirt a couple of upticks on either side where you would expect wires to come in on either side of that harness in order to support it. Of course, they've computer graphicked out the supporting wires. You can't actually see them. My research of the last year has led me to the conclusion that not even low Earth orbit is possible, that the International Space Station is a hoax, 
and all manned space travel is fake. First, though, let's have a look at the International Space Station. I want to talk about some of the anomalies I see there. For the inside of the International Space Station, there are a couple of zero-gravity tricks that they use to fake it. The first is they have a complete mock-up of the International Space Station built on the inside of an airplane. And that airplane does a bunch of rises and falls. It does a parabolic, upside-down parabolic trajectory, and that simulates zero-gravity. The other main way they simulate the zero-gravity is with suspension in front of a blue screen. And they use that trick for extended periods of time, for longer than 45-second segments. But they can't move around as much. They can't do the acrobatic flips and rolls in the extended mode. So there's full motion mode where they can fully move around, and that's faked in a plane. And then there's suspended or extended mode where they're suspended by wires in front of a blue screen. They don't move around as much, but they can make the scene last for a longer period of time. The extended mode is much quieter than the full motion mode. In full motion mode you can actually hear the sound of the jet engines, the engines of the airplane. In every single scene of full motion mode, in every segment of the International Space Station, you can hear this loud sound, the sound of the jet engines. You could argue that it's the air conditioning Sorry, system. Not even an office air conditioner is that loud. And why is there a loud sound in every segment of the International Space Station? That's because no matter how soundproof you make it, you can't filter out all of the sound of the jet engines. An airplane is just too noisy. If you have a look at this scene here, you can see that when the microphone's in the middle, pointing towards the guy in the middle, you can't hear the sound of jet engines as much, but when the microphone goes to the guy on the side, you can hear the sound of jet engines a bit more. So you can't truly soundproof the inside of the airplane where they fake full motion mode. You can see in this scene from the recent National Geographic documentary, Live from Space, Kochi Wakata is um, in looking at the in window there. Area, this is full motion the mode, the and you can tell because of the sound of jet engines. Now have a look at their feet. There's stabilisation bars, blue stabilisation bars. Detection. 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 As he moves away from there, he moves forward, and once again he hangs on to the bar on the side with his left hand to stabilise himself. Like jelly beans, but then how to eat these in space? This is truly challenging because as soon as I open this bag, all of these are going to want to come out. And so, I'm going to have to have just a couple come out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
that caught my attention and you will see the same things that I saw. Let's watch. We have to introduce the concept of free fall. So let's use this model of the earth and let's enlist the help of a friend, Patsy. You might know her. So what is significant about this video is number one, it was live to school children. Number two, we have this stuffed animal that is transitioning in on another video channel. And the actor is able to reach up and grab this doll in real 3D space and manipulate this doll with their hands. And so the only way you're going to pull that off is with one technology. And that technology is virtual reality. Next segment, I'm going to show you how NASA grabs objects in 3D space rotates them around, manipulates them. They can do this with water, with cloth, anything. And the cool thing about it is we can take what they're doing, what they're seeing with their contact virtual reality augmented lenses and put that on a separate video layer live. So in this clip, they're talking live feed. And what you know, we have a astronaut go by us in the background, uh, obviously trying to give it a more realistic, spacey, station, busy effect. The only problem is the camera that was supposed to mask this harness out or the uh, video feed is not working. And so we see the guy come flying along in a harness on his wires. Pretty amazing. But that's not all that goes wrong here. Okay, so you see to the right, this guy's flipping this hat. This hat's actually on another video um, channel in 3D space. It's virtual reality. He's, they're wearing augmented uh, contact lenses so that they can interact with these 3D objects. Now, in this scene, the guy on the left in the green shirt, he thinks he sees an object in 3D space that's being broadcast to him. So he grabs it and he puts it off to the side. He's looking straight ahead because he's looking at an object rotating in front of him, but the video channel is down that is supposed to show the viewers what we're supposed to see, and so we don't actually get to see the object that he has seen. And I would just sum this up as a very terrible, bad, horrible day for NASA doing live feeds. Specifically how HoloLens can turn every room of your house into a personalized video game level. But today, we want to take mixed reality one step further. So we've got something new to show you. Holograms you can hold. This holographic gauntlet is the weapon that Dan will be using while playing Project X-Ray. You'll notice that as he moves his arm, the hologram moves as well. This is a wearable hologram. And when you combine technology like this with the environment understanding of HoloLens, you can do some pretty spectacular things. And can even use his shield to defend himself. Nicely done. Looks like that's all of them.
whole arm set up and the virtual reality glove that covers all the way down the arm and hand. This allows the software to broadcast what we see video wise as his arm in a shirt sleeve. Okay, I have a lot of Tim Peak screw ups, but this one here, this system glitches, the software does not track his hand properly. And Tim slips his hand underneath his other fingers, which is tightly holding onto the mic, which would be impossible. Um, I don't think this is Tim's fault. Normally, Tim always moves his other fingers up while he slides his hand under. I just think the uh, system didn't respond to his movements here. Yeah, yes. people come yeah, out sure. and they just they've run out of anecdotes, you know, yeah. and they and uh, and they just start making stuff up. Yeah. Like that Neil Armstrong guy. Have you seen him on the talk shows? Neil Armstrong. Do you mean the first man to walk on the moon? Talk about a fish story. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> man, and they're buying it. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do you hear me? Yes, sir. We have you loud and clear. Who's ready to go to Mars up there? We are absolutely ready to go to Mars. Uh, it's going to be a fantastic... Amazing, what an amazing cheat. Uh, amazing, what an amazing cheat. Uh, amazing, what an amazing cheat. Uh, so why didn't I flinch? Because the laws of science differ fundamentally from those of...